bombardment from the largest fleet the Navy has ever assembled. The first thing to say about uh, Spielberg's Lincoln film is that it is a phenomenally good piece of cinema. It's a phenomenally good film, and I would urge people to go and see it. I'd then urge them to go and read a history book about the American Civil War as well. Euclid's first common notion is this. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. I mean, I've spent uh, 10 years or more studying, researching, writing about politics during the American Civil War and about Lincoln in particular. And to an incredible extent, I was watching Daniel Day-Lewis and I was, I was watching the Lincoln that I'd read about, the Lincoln that, whose letters I'd uh, touched. I was watching him come to life. I think Daniel Day-Lewis's performance of Lincoln is extraordinary. In his book, hmm, Euclid says this is self-evident. This is not a big, sprawling biopic of Lincoln's life. The film actually concentrates on only about three or four weeks in January 1865, with a few flashbacks and a few flashes forward. And that's the period when Lincoln's White House and people around him were pushing Congress to pass the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. That's the amendment that finally abolished slavery. And so on one level, the film is like a 19th century version of the West Wing. It's about the president trying to scare up votes for a measure. You need a two-thirds majority for a, uh, a congressional amendment to pass uh, the House of Representatives. And in the end, this was achieved. And as depicted in the film, it was achieved um, to the cheering and to the tears of abolitionists, um, black people, people who've been campaigning for the end of slavery in the United States for decades. Worthy you ought to be treated equally before the law. What draws me to him as a historian, I'm writing a, a biography of Lincoln at the moment, what draws me to him is this sense that Lincoln achieved all that and rose to that position of such power and such prominence without ever, you feel, succumbing to the vice of uh, arrogance. He, all, he wasn't a humble man. He knew he had the common touch, but he wasn't of the common people. Yet, he always had a sense of humility in the face of what he would call providence. He always had a sense that his uh, leadership um, was in a wider context in which there were forces beyond his own control. And that makes him, I think, quite an appealing figure to spend time with and to spend studying. You know, it's amazing. There's supposedly been more books written about Abraham Lincoln in the English language than anyone else other than Jesus. And yet we still, there are things about him that we as historians still argue fiercely over because the evidence isn't there or the evidence is contradictory. Even in the spring of 1865, when the film is set, what you certainly don't see in the film is that Lincoln had a meeting in which he continued to push for the colonization of freed African-American slaves. In other words, their um, resettlement outside the bounds of the United States. Now, this needs to be explained carefully. Lincoln wasn't talking about forced deportation. And he, I don't think, can possibly have imagined that colonization would be a solution for all of the nearly five million African-American people in the United States at that time. But what it does show is that this moral, clear moral choice was coupled with much less clear-cut choices about what would happen post-emancipation. Lincoln's shown in the film as talking about perhaps giving the vote to some um, freedmen. And that is historically true. Lincoln did. But what's fascinating about Lincoln is that the same man who could talk about giving the vote to African-Americans could also talk about colonization. What I'll try to do in my biography is to see Lincoln as I think he should be seen, as someone who was remarkably in tune with popular opinion, whose racial views were sometimes quite abhorrent by our standards in the 21st century, whose understanding of the problem of black people, the problem of slavery, was often remarkably limited and incomplete, but who learnt an extraordinary amount in an extraordinary short 
time. And that seems to me to be the right way of understanding him, a more human way of understanding him, actually, a way of projecting Lincoln not as an icon, not as the great emancipator, but as a very intelligent and reflective and articulate human being who was dealing with extraordinary dilemmas, extraordinary pressures in one of the most, um, the most uh, dramatic crisis in the Western world in the 19th century.